Good morning. It is Phil to the Bram, and it is Thursday, February 3rd, and we're talking about managing the blessings that God has given to us. We are to manage those blessings, and they're not to manage us. They're not to become idols uh, before us and us to worship those things. The blessings are not the priority. The blesser, the Lord, is the priority, and one of the things humans can fall into, yes, even Christians in 2022 can fall into, is allowing the blessings of their lives to be what controls them, to be what they serve, and that is fleshly, that is sinful, and that is wrong. And the Lord alerted my spirit to say, listen, you need to speak forth my word that they are to manage those blessings. And sometimes the most dangerous parts of our lives is when we are being blessed because we can get distracted by those blessings. We need to be aware of that and draw nearer to the Lord and have the Lord teach us how to manage those blessings to remain surrendered to the Lord. It says in Romans 125, this is one of the things that sinful humanity did. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Serving the created things rather than the creator. You know, yesterday I, wrote, I read a scripture that we kind of had to um, interrupt it, explaining it because of time. Jeremiah 2, 5 through 13. And I'm going to read this again because we're going to go into the sins that were committed against God when they began to serve the created things, when they began to serve the idols of this world. Jeremiah 2, 5 through 13 this is what the Lord says. What fault did your fathers find in me that they strayed so far from me and followed worthless idols and became uh, worthless themselves? They did not ask, where is the Lord who brought us up out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of deserts and ravines, a land of drought and utter darkness, a land where no one travels and no one lives? I brought you into a fertile land to eat its fruit and bounty, but you came and defiled my land and made my inheritance detestable. Why? Because you began to worship the very thing that I brought you into, that I blessed you with. The priest did not ask, where is the Lord? The experts in the law no longer knew me, and the leaders rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and followed useless idols. Therefore, I will contend with you again, declares the Lord, and I will bring a case against your children's children. Cross over to the coast of Cyprus and look, send a keter and observe closely. See if there has ever been anything like this. Has a nation ever changed its gods, though they are no gods at all? Yet my people have exchanged their glory for useless idols. This is what happens when we serve other things. We exchange our, the glory God has given to us for the useless idols. Be stunned by this. O oh, heavens, be shocked and utterly appalled, declares the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. And this is what we're going to get down to. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and they have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. See, this is where it all goes wrong. Is when we forsake him, the fountain of living water. At the beginning of this passage in Jeremiah 2 verse 5, it says, this is what the Lord says, What fault did your fathers find in me that they strayed so far from me? It's interesting that the Lord God, speaking through Jeremiah, says this to the people. What fault did your fathers find with me? It's interesting because this has to do with the mindset. The mindset of the people. That for some reason, the people in this passage became critical of their God, that he did not meet the need that they had, or that there was something that he wasn't up to par with the gods of this world. He wasn't the cool factor. He wasn't whatever, feeding something that they wanted to be fed, even though God did not want to feed them in that way. Why? Because it wasn't good for them. See, the the Baalism and the idols of this world will feed our flesh, will feed our sinful flesh. And so that they became critical of their God. And that opened the door to serve other gods, becoming critical. What fault did you find with me, the Lord says? How do you become critical? It's interesting because we can get a critical attitude. A lot of times our critical spirit may not be direct towards God, 
but maybe towards the servants of the Lord that are trying to speak truth, trying to help disciple you, help you to grow in the Lord, to surrender your life to the Lord. And so we become critical, which gives us the excuse not to listen, which gives us a hardened heart. Now, it's interesting because this passage in Scripture, actually that truth is right there in the middle of Scripture because you find that these people, the Israelites, are listening to some leaders, are listening to people, but they're listening to the wrong people. They're listening to the people who are feeding their flesh. I'm going to say this. You can go find people, Christian leaders, people who call themselves Christian leaders, who will tell you what you want to hear, who will tell you that what you're doing is okay, that your priorities are okay, even though you have forsook the Lord your God. You have forsook the fountain of living water, that you have uh, began to uh, serve the blessings in your life, the, the physical things that you have in your life, the money that you have in your life, your own flesh, and uh, maybe the fact that you like to have lots of leisure and entertainment, and you place those things as a priority over worship, and spending time with the Lord, having a Sabbath day, making sure that you're prioritizing God with your time, keeping yourself submitted to the Lord. See, you will find leaders. You will find leaders that will tell you that Israel way back then when the prophet, the true prophet is telling them they have forsook the fountain of living waters. These people, these Israelites had people in their lives that were confirming and affirming the way that they were living and what they were actually doing, what Israel was actually doing is forsaking the fountain of living water. But they had people that were supporting that. People that they could say, well, this person says it's okay. Well, this person interprets it okay because it feeds my flesh. So I'm going to go find somebody that's going to confirm and to affirm the way that I want to live. Be aware of that. Beware of that. That is something in our modern day false prophets, false uh, teachers are in our modern day too. Not just back in the Old Testament, not just in the New Testament when Paul the Apostles writing to the churches, but are in our day, in our modern day right now. And it's part of the end times. But if you have teachers in your lives, if you have prophets or ministers or pastors or whatever, fill in the blank that are affirming your fleshly behavior, affirming your sinful behavior, which is causing you to forsake the fountain of living water, which is the Holy Spirit's presence in your life, which requires surrender to him. You are listening to the wrong people. You are listening to the wrong people. And you know what? The outcomes of that is this, that you're serving your flesh. That your heart is growing cold. Because it always begins in the heart. It, it cultivates, false teachers cultivate the attitude that I don't have to be accountable for, to, to other people. Now, what is accountability? It's the 360 degrees of our lives. In other words, you know what? You can't be accountable and one dimension accountability you got to have people who see your life. That's why the community of faith is so important because you need 360 degree accountability. You know, we don't know what our back end looks like a lot of times. Oh, I would say all, most of the time, unless you're in some sort of fitting room where you have a mirror back there. But the bottom line is this. We have to walk with other believers that help us remain accountable because the enemy is very sneaky and deceptive. He wants to get you out there all by yourself and you say the right things when the time comes. But really, in your heart, you are beginning to grow cold and serving the gods of this world. You are serving the gods of Baal, just like Jeremiah speaks to the people. You know what? The people didn't like what Jeremiah said. You may not like what I'm saying right now. But you know what? The people wanted to kill Jeremiah. Why? Because he was speaking the truth to them. He was wanting their hearts to turn toward the Lord. And the fact is this, just as this scripture begins in Jeremiah 2, the Lord addresses the mindset of the people. You have found fault with me. And it has opened the door for you to serve other gods. It has opened the door. Your critical heart, your offended heart. You know, these people were offended by Jeremiah speaking the word of the Lord. We find this to be true in Jeremiah 11. 
up and they seek to kill him because they don't want to listen to the truth. They want somebody to tickle their ears. They want these other prophets' words, not the truth that Jeremiah is speaking. But Jeremiah is speaking to them to turn their heart's passion back to the Lord. It's no different today. It's no different in these end times. Calling forth is, what's your heart passion? has to do with managing your blessings. Let me just say this. Have you forsook the fountain of living water? We are to be planted by the waters of God. That's how you bear fruit. Never serving the blessing, but always keeping our heart passion for Him, the Creator, not the created thing. God bless you. Pray about this word. More to come tomorrow.